Well, if you would, I want you to open your Bibles up to the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. Uh, many of you have probably never heard a message out of the book of Leviticus. It's not an easy book to preach out of. Well, it is easier once you begin to learn more about him. It's an easy, easy book. It's an easy word because it's uh, the, the Bible. I love the Bible. It's good to have everyone here. We've got a busy, busy week this week here, so thanks for all those who are helping and being a part. The wedding yesterday, I did my first full big wedding yesterday. How'd I do? Yeah, I survived. It was a quick wedding. We were in and out. It's the way I like it. They all came from Catholicism, so they said, don't go that long. It's usually two or three hours. I said, don't worry. It'll be about two or three minutes. That's all you're going to get. Get the done. Get the deal done. Hallelujah. Leviticus 23. How many of you know what we've been talking about the last few weeks? Tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. We love to talk about that. Leviticus 23, can I, uh, can I say I just took up my first offering? I, I did that, did I? Just now I just took up an offering for Karenette. Some of you all know we've never taken up an offering here. That's the first one I've ever, ever got to do like that. It's good. I've always asked for money for others and, 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 and ministries and whatnot. But um, the Lord is teaching us all, amen? So in the book of Malachi, we, we've talked about when, when, when Malachi wrote in chapter 3, Will a man rob God, yet you've robbed me? You've robbed me in tithes and offerings. And as I began to study this, I saw this thing called first fruits mentioned several times along with the tithe, the offering, and the first fruits. And it's multiple places, and I'm not going to go into all that like we have already addressed some of this. And most people would just take the, 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 the name or the word first fruits and say, well, yeah, Jesus was the first fruits. He went to heaven. No one could go to heaven. All those Old Testament people were just kind of hanging out in a place called paradise until Jesus went. And when he went and put his blood on the, the mercy seat, it was holy, perfect blood. That was the sacrifice needed. And then whammo, Moses and Abraham, all of them got to go out of paradise and head to heaven. Jesus was the first fruits. He had to be the first one into heaven. No one could get there. He is heaven. Amen? Without him, there is no heaven. So all that went on, all that's happened. And we all say, well, yeah, we've heard those messages in church before. The first fruits, we're the first fruits, yada, yada, yada. Israel is the firstborn, is the first fruits of God, right? The country of Israel, the name Israel, Jewish people, they were the firstborn of Israel or of God, right? Listen, there is a massive movement. I'm on a, I'm on a rabbit trail just for a second. I've realized studying this lesson that there's no way it can happen in one week. So we'll have to do first fruits maybe for just a, a little bit. There's so much in this that's amazing what, what the Lord has revealed. And, and I, had a, I was walking through my property this week, and the Holy Spirit hit me. It was early, early morning. I was walking, kind of praying and walking out to do some cleaning early. And, and, and the Lord hit me and said, you're walking on property because of first fruits. And I kept walking, and I thought, dear God. How many of you ever heard my, our testimony, my wife and I, about our land and this building and all that? I mean, raise your hand if you've ever heard that. Wait till we get done with this. That was, it was first fruits. This is first fruits. Listen, first fruits is still alive today. God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves, absolutely loves faith. He loves faith, and he loves a free will offering. He's not a God saying, well, you got to give 10% or else. No, that's the tithe. You, you, that's his anyway, right? You bring the tithe to him. The, everything else, the offering, the first fruits, that's just your choice. Remember last week we talked about happy. The happiest people on the planet are what? They're givers. The happiest people, the healthiest people are givers on the earth. They, they did the study. I mean, if you weren't here last week, we did a study. They did studies all, you can look through all the Internet. The happiest people and people who, they, who, people who they gave money to to give away were somewhat happy. But the people that took their own money and gave it away, they were happier and their blood pressure went down. They became healthier. Friend, it's because it's biblical stuff. Okay, we're talking biblical stuff here. We're not talking obligatory things here. Well, you're obligated to do this or else. No, we're talking about you choose how much do you want to free will give? How many of you know this morning when we did worship, it was your choice whether to say, 
I see you move. You move the mountain. Lord, worthy is your name. Jesus, the name above. It was your free will offering. You could, you could raise your hand. You could clap. You could smile. You could just sit there like a knot on a log. I don't like Jason singing. I don't like Lexi's guitar's too small. I don't like Nick up there playing. Marcos is too loud. Lucas's hair is too high. You know, everybody's got an excuse. You know, the devil can just steer us. But see, sometimes you got to fight to get into the offering. you got to fight to get in to do something for God. Amen? So let's look at this real quick. Leviticus 23. So we're not going to go back to tithes and offering. The tithe is the top 10%, right, the increase. And God said it was mine from the beginning. It never was yours. You're not giving it. Bring it back to me. Malachi 3.18 says, or 3.8 says, will you rob God? You're robbing God if you don't bring the 10 back to him. How many of you ever heard this statement? I'd rather live with 90 that's blessed than 100 that's cursed. Amen? How many of you know money, money is, is the, the love of money is the root of all evil? A real good sign that you love money is that you don't want to give it or help other people with it. It's a real good sign, right? Leviticus 23, are you there? Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus. 23.10, here we go, I want to read this together. Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, when you are come into the land, everybody say land, which I gave unto you, and you shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Okay, so you're going to take the, the wheat, the barley, whatever it is from the land, you're going to take it from the land that I gave you, the harvest, and you're going to bring it to the priest. And he shall wave that offering before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, on the next day, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Stay with me. Do not miss these words. Everything in the Word of God has a purpose. There's the Sabbath, and then wham, the next day is when they're going to do this. All this happens. Verse 12. You shall offer... That day when you wave the sheaf, a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two-tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, a fourth part of a hen. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day, until that day, don't eat anything at that harvest until you've brought an offering unto God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and in all your dwellings. How many of you know that God has not changed? And you shall count unto you, verse 15, from the morrow, after, the next day after the Sabbath, from the day that you have brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the next day after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number 50 days. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two-tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits of the Lord. Now, I want to pray over this word. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to, to open your heart and open your ears because the Lord wants to reveal something to you today. I promise you, he wants to reveal something to us. How many of you know the land is cursed? It goes back to Genesis. Have you know why the land was cursed? What happens to land if it's, if it's undone and not taken care of? Weeds, briars, trees. How many of you mow grass? How many of you have an area you used to mow and you don't mow now? What happened to it? Overgrown. Things happen. Things happen, Right? I want to pray. Let's pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal himself to you today. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. God, I ask you to speak to us today. Lord, you've said to put you first in all things. And God, we've often said it from Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things, our food, our shelter, our clothing, all these things will be taken care of if we put you first. Lord, I ask you to reveal yourself today in this, in this message. Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So this offering, this offering unto the Lord of the first of the fruits of the harvest is to express the submission, our dependence, and our thankfulness to God for the fruits he supplied. How many of you have ever made a tomato grow? How many of you have ever planted a seed and watered it and helped some things happen, but something just happened, it just grew, right? You don't make it grow, the earth make it grow, or the earth makes it grow, right? What God provided, how many of you have ever used bad soil? Anybody ever had something you planted that didn't grow? So you know when it doesn't grow, right? we got to prepare things, and it's got to be harvested right. It's got to be in good soil, amen? There are two different words in the Hebrew for the word first fruits. And we're just going to look at one this morning, and maybe next week perhaps we'll look at the other. And I want you to see this. This first fruit, everybody say this with me, timing. Have you ever heard the word timing is everything? Timing is everything, amen? So, so is the first fruits. The first fruit, timing is everything. Okay, timing of the first fruits. Listen to this. Jesus died on Passover, amen? He went to the tomb, was in there three days. The third day was Sunday, right? Americans cannot count. We celebrate Good Friday, and then he rose on Sunday. Friend, he didn't die on Friday. It ain't Good Friday. It was a good Sunday. Amen? Any way you count from Friday to Sunday, you can't get three days. Amen? Some of y'all looking at me like, I never heard that. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is two days. Right? From Friday to Saturday and Sunday is two days. He didn't die on Friday, right? Three days. He he died, listen to this, third day is Sunday, which is the first of the week, right? First day of the week. I don't care about our Greco calendar. We're talking about Bible stuff here, which some of it's the same. The Sunday is the first. Everybody say the first day of the week. Jesus was raised on the first month of the calendar. He was raised, listen to this, Jesus was raised on first fruits. He was raised on first fruits. He came back to life. So the first fruits is this. This is the first day of the week. This was also the first day of the year. Okay? So let me real quick, if you don't know this, how many of you ever heard of Rosh Hashanah? That's the seventh month of the Jewish calendar. They call that the new year. That is the civil new year where, where their budgets and business and government and stuff like that happen. How many of you know what the first month is? Anybody know what? The first month is Nisan or Abib. Abib. Right? That's the first month, which happens in our March or April, around March or April our time. Now, don't get confused, but hear me out. His calendar and his timing is perfect. Okay? We need to start listening and obeying God's calendar, not man's. We've been duped a little bit. So, the first month, so like we would write January 01, the first one to, on God's calendar is Nisan, or again, the word Abib, you can look at it. It's mentioned seven or eight times in the Bible, the word Abib is, which is the Hebrew word for, like we would say, January, but it's, it's, it's the month of Nisan, and it starts around spring. Everybody like spring? How many of you seen any new animals come be born this spring? Anybody seen a new deer? There's a baby deer out here, and I'm serious. This thing is about eight inches tall. It was just born. Isn't it cool? How many of you see the grass growing? How many guard got gardens going right now? It's the first. It's the growth. It's the new. Everybody say new. You like new? Spring cleaning because I want something new and first. That's what's happening here. In the beginning, in the beginning, in Genesis 1-1, anybody know what it says? Genesis 1-1? In the beginning, I just gave you the hint. <laughs> in the beginning, God, right? Do you know what this Hebrew word in the beginning is? Resheth. You know what Resheth is? First fruits. That's the meaning. Beginning, first fruits. In the beginning, first fruits. The Jews translated the Bible into Greek, right? And the word Genesis, guess what the word Genesis means? Resheth. First fruits. The Genesis. Interesting, huh? How about Matthew 1 1? Matthew 1 1. The book of of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. It says Genesis. The 
first, the beginning, the genesis, the generation of Jesus. That says the resheth, or the, the Greek word meaning the first fruits of Jesus Christ. Listen, everything was about Jesus from the beginning until now. Everything, everything. Everything. Sunday is the first, the beginning, the genesis, the resurrection, the first fruit, the new creation. Jesus said, you must be born again, right? Right? The new genesis. He's the new genesis. This time, the beginning happens after the end of something, right? A beginning happens after the end of something. How many of you love coming out of winter, going into spring? You know why? Because you're leaving. We're leaving something in the old, something in the dark, something in the past, something in the cold, and we're coming into a new season of life. How many of you have ever had to get a new kickstart on your life? You messed up, and, man, you lived it for a while, and all of a sudden, I've got to try something different. This, this way I'm doing it is not working. You've got to leave the old, come out of the old, and go into something new. I love Sinto's testimony. We were actually going to show another one, and I actually forgot to tell those guys, but I think it was the, the Lord to do this. Listen to this girl's testimony. Think about what she came from. I know this family, by the way. I know this family. I know her sister, and, and, and so I think it was just really cool to watch this testimony. Um, my, my wife made, it, made a note about it last night when we watched it. She said, I love it because you talk about all the pain of the past, and the pain of the past, it never goes away unless you deal with it in Christ. Amen. And Jesus wants to make all things new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, how many of you like new? I like new. Nissan is, is Abib. It's, it's, it means this word, green or young ear of corn or young ear of grain. There was a time frame for the first fruit offering, and it was done before the harvest began. Listen to me real quick. This is powerful. I believe God wants to reveal something to us for today, 2021 and beyond, about harvest. About harvest. How many of you want to see a harvest? I'm not talking about your corn and your green beans, friend. I'm talking about souls for Jesus, the things that matter most. Former things have to be gone so new things can happen. Without faith... It is impossible to please him. So the fir- first fruit offering looked like this, and I want you to think about spiritual terms. I want you to think about this. The first fruit offering was brought. So let's take barley or let's take the wheat. Here's what the wheat was done. They brought the wheat. They threshed it in the courts of the temple, and they cleaned it very well. How many of you know the wheat and the chaff is going to be separated? And it's going to be cleaned very well. God's going to know who's his sheep, and he's going to know who the goat is. He's going to know who puts him first and then those who just put up with him. It was then roasted and pounded into a mortar. How many of you came to Jesus and your life got harder? The night season began. That's what happens normally. I mean, I know it's not the American way of preaching. Most people say, hey, come to Jesus and everything will be all good. No, I'm going to tell you what happens. Usually he starts ripping things out of your heart saying, "Uh, I need you to come a little closer. I need you to get rid of that. I need you to quit doing that. I need you to quit listening to that. Quit Quit hanging around with that person because they're bringing you down. And you're like, huh, who's this Jesus think he is? Right? But if you're obedient to the Holy Spirit, you begin to walk those things with Christ, and you realize, wait a minute, there's, there's, there's good stuff here. So he pounds it into mortar. Then they measured a, a olive oil. It was added to it. A handful of incense was added. Then the priest would wave it before the Lord, and they threw a handful of it into the fire upon the altar of the Lord. After this sacrifice... And it was a free will, brought what you want. After this sacrifice, everyone was at liberty to go get your harvest. After your sacrifice, then you were free to go harvest your land. But this acknowledgement to God was that his is first. His is first. Listen, let me go ahead and tell you where I'm going here. I believe we need to come back to I believe everything we do, listen to me. I believe everything we do, everything we do, our job Anything new we do, every new car, every, this is just me. This ain't Bible. This is me, but I'm, I'm seeing this. Everything we do, we need to give it unto God first. How many of you want Jesus to look over your car when you're driving down the road, 70 mile an hour? How many of you want the Holy Spirit to take care of your wife when they're driving down their car? You want your, you want your wheels to keep stayed up. You want your, your refrigerators to run. Listen, I'm not talking about 
God's going to curse you if you don't. No, I'm just talking about being a blessing. The Lord looking over. Put everything first, everything first. Old cars can run, can't they, justice? Exodus 34, 26 says this, The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the Lord thy God. You shall... Uh, and the Lord said unto Moses, Write these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Listen to Numbers eighteen twelve. All the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and the best of the wheat, the first fruits of them all, which they shall offer unto the Lord, them gave I to them. God gave them to us. Amen. And whatsoever is ripe, First ripe in the land which they shall bring into the Lord shall be thine. Everyone that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. That's Numbers 18, 12. I want you to write that down if you're taking notes. Numbers 18, 12. How many of you have ever given God maybe second or third best in, in something in your life? He wants first place in everything. He doesn't have to have it, nor do you have to give it all to be his child. I'm not saying that. But I am saying this. Do you want to experience his fullness? Do you want to experience his first? It seems to me that the first fruits always had to do with something with the land. Wheat from the land, Jericho. I want you to turn to the book of Joshua. I want to look through this, and this is where I got stuck up here. I didn't know which way to go today, and I I know today now we've got to do this. Joshua 4.18, next week we're going to talk maybe a little bit about Abraham and Melchizedek. For those of you who are Bible students and you realize Melchizedek was who? It was Jesus. Before Abraham was, I am, he told to the Pharisees and Sadducees, listen to this, Jesus said to the Pharisees and Sadducees, and listen, if you know the Old Testament, what Jesus said in the New makes sense. Amen? He had this encounter in Genesis 4.18 Abraham comes back from the first battle, right? He went and rescued Lot, and he took all the possessions of the enemy, right? All their stuff, all their gold, all their stuff, all their animals. Here comes Jesus walking on the earth. Now, y'all, some of y'all thinking, hey, well, y'all, you're crazy. Friend, it was Jesus. Melchizedek, king of Salem, no father, no mother, no generations, no this. He just shows up. Friend, he didn't show up. He says, before Abraham was, I am. And he said this to the Pharisees. Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. And they said to him, what? Are you as old as you were around when Abraham was? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Friend, Jesus ain't God Jr. Jesus ain't God Jr., friend. He came down on earth. Some of y'all, I can see people saying, what? Friend, Jesus was around before Bethlehem, Amen. John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and those who worship him, mm, I mean, that's not my message today. You can send messages later if you want to. We're going to Joshua. Moses died. Joshua's leading Israel in the promised land, right? And, jo- and Jericho is the first property there right after, right after, right into the promised land. It was the first place, right? Moses is dead. They could not enter the promised land, right, because of his disobedience. And he said, all right, Joshua, here's what you're going to do. This is the first battle. Here's what you're going to do. Joshua 4.18, I want you to turn to Joshua 4.18. I want, to, I want you to see this. And I, I was going somewhere with Abraham. Get back to, let me go back to Abraham real quick because I want you to see this. I want you to be thinking, but this is the question for you. So he comes to Melchizedek, right? Melchizedek comes to Abraham, and, 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 and Abraham gave Melchizedek what? He gave a tithe. No, he didn't. He gave a first fruit. Here's why I believe that. It doesn't say anything. Abraham did not have anything at that time. Remember, he's away from home. He went to a battle, took all the stuff. Listen to this. And it says, here comes Melchizedek. Melchizedek gives him bread and wine. They have fellowship. They have communion. I love that. Jesus was the bread. His blood was the wine. He was all over the Bible. He had all kinds of theophanies in the the Old Testament. He was everywhere. They had this encounter. Hebrews even says Abraham gave him a tenth, gave him a a spoil. Abraham didn't have anything. And then after that it says the king of Sodom who, who, who he rescued, Abraham said, I'm not taking anything from you. All these spoils, I'm not giving, I don't want anything. So what did Abraham give? He gave everything. Right? 
it says, the king of Sodom says, I'm going to give you all the goods. I just want all my people, but you can have all the goods and all the silver, the gold, animals. You can have everything else. Abraham says, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not taking anything. Give it to him. Give everything from this first battle to him. He gave it to Melchizedek. He gave it to Christ. It was the first fruits. First battle, first fruits. Now look at Joshua. Let's fast forward. Let's let's, um, move ahead here, right? Move ahead to Joshua 4.18. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up onto the dry land, that the waters of the Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all the banks as they did before. Verse 19, look at this. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month. When was that? Abib. Nisan, right? The first month is Nisan. It's the first month. And they encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. What day was it on the first month? Everybody say 10th. Look at the timing. Turn to ch- uh, chapter 5, verse 10. Now, everybody knows this is the first battle, right? The first battle into the new land. You staying with me? I need to get some amens or omis or make sure your neighbor's awake. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit to get started here. We've got to lay this foundation. It's the first month. They're in a new land. Amen? And it's the first battle. First battle. Here we go, verse 10. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover. Hmm, interesting. And they kept the Passover on which day? The 14th day of the month. At evening in the plains of Jericho, and they did eat of the, oh, I love that. They were still eating the old corn. You know why? Because they hadn't come into the first fruits yet. They were eating of the old corn of the land, and on the, on the morrow, on the next day after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day, and the manna ceased on the morrow, the next day, after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of the Canaan that year. They ran out of the old. Listen to this. This is powerful. How many of you have ever had a situation where you worked a job, you worked it for years, and all of a sudden you said, I'm done. I feel like I'm done here. I've got this feeling I'm done here. I, I don't know what else to give. I don't know what else they need. Uh, anybody ever had that feeling? Anybody had, had that feeling in a relationship? I, I, I just feel like it's done. There's nothing new. I've done everything I can do, and it's just over. Anybody ever been there? Listen, this is where God, and, and the man has ceased. God says, enough of the old. It's time to move into the new. You've got to take the next step into the new, in the newness. But it's going to take something. There is a first fruit offering that you've got to step into. You've got to step into some. You've got to do your part. I'm not going to do everything for you. I'm going to fight your battle. But you've got to step into the newness. You have got to make the move. And I'll help you out. Seven days they walked around, right? Look at chapter 6, verse 3. We're, we're flying through here fast. Joshua 6, 3. And you shall encompass the city all you men of war, and go around about the city once. And you'll do this six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And on the seventh day you shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Look at verse 17. So by the way, you're all getting to this. If you, if you, if you count all this up, you're seeing what's happening, right? Tenth day. The 14th day, how many of you know the fall feast of the Lord? The unleavened bread, feast of unleavened bread, and then whammo, there's that. And you got these, these weeks, uh, you got the weeks, the past the 50 weeks, right? The seven sevens, we read that earlier, the seven sevens of Leviticus 23. And then the next day is, the, 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 next day is the, the feast. Listen to this, verse 18. No, I'm sorry, verse 17. Listen to what God tells Joshua. And the city, Jericho, shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. The word accursed, listen to this, is a net, a doomed object. 
this city, God says this, to me, that city is a trap. Everything in it is a net. It's a, it's a doomed object. Don't you dare steal one, one gold cent. Don't you dare, dare take one pigeon. Don't take one lamb. Don't take, I don't want it. God says, I don't want it. The whole entire city, to me, it's cursed to you. Okay, it's a curse to me. Don't you touch it. Interesting, isn't it? You know, if we begin to look at that, how many of you have ever seen money become a curse to someone? I, I said this a couple of weeks ago about the lottery winners. It was kind of funny. I said that. Remember, how many of you remember talking about the lottery winners? And it was funny. I t- Wednesday night I said this. I had, I had uh, met with someone this week, and they said, I need you to pray for me, Jason. I'm meeting with someone who just won a lottery. Won, won a, or not just won, but they had won $128 million in the lottery. I said, okay. I said, they need prayer. And they looked at me and said, you don't have any idea. I said, oh, yeah, I had an idea. I just preached about it. They said, no, you don't have any idea. They're miserable. I said, I know. I just preached it. I know they're miserable. They said, you won't believe it. They stayed in their house 11 days straight when they won. They figured out they won it. And for three months, the woman has done nothing but be in counseling. She's lo- losing her mind because people, everybody's banging on them. They want, they, they want this. They want the, they, they've lost their friends. They don't know who to trust anymore. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. I preach about it. It can become a net. It, it, can become, it can become a doomed object if you let it. If you let it, right? Well, some of you say, well, I'll tithe on it, Jason. No, he don't need your tithe. Friend, it's a doomed object to you. The Lord says work for your money. Not to go buy no lottery ticket. Because you, you won't know what to do with it when you get it. Go, go look up again, for those of you who didn't hear it, go look up the top 20 lottery winners in America. Look at their life. 19 of them said they would give it up in a heartbeat. They would give it all back in a heartbeat to have their old life back. And the other one's dead. Shazam, let's go buy a lottery ticket. It's a doomed object. God says, don't you entangle yourself with that stuff because everything in this first battle, it's first, it's mine. This is the first part of the land. It's mine. It's first fruits. I want everything in it. It's mine. Listen, this is powerful stuff. It, get this. Verse 18. And you, in any wise, keep yourself from those accursed things, lest you make yourselves accursed. When you take of the accursed thing, that doomed object, and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and all the gold, all the vessels of brass and iron, they are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Again, this is the first city in God's land. This is God's land. In the first month of the first year is is God's. He is the one delivering it to you. Do not rob him. How many of you know Israel is the firstborn of God? Do not Do not, do not curse Israel. There is a massive movement of Christians, listen to me, there is a massive movement right now of Christians who are, who, who, who they're fighting against people who like Israel or praying for Israel and talk about Israel. Friend, don't you fight against Israel's first, God's firstborn. Don't you dare do it. You will be a curse. God will, he'll run you down. That's his firstborn son. Are they lost? Are they going to hell without Jesus? Yes, they are. How many of you have any children or grandchildren or something that's lost and you wouldn't pray for them? Do you curse them? You want someone near you to say, well, your, your, your grandson's a heathen. I wish they would go to hell. That's what's happening to Israel right now. Listen, they are still God's firstborn. I don't care. They're, they're as lost as a goose. So we know they are, but they're still his firstborn child. Be careful. Be careful. Don't you dare jump, jump on that, that bandwagon. Proverbs 3, 9 says this. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. I want to share just quickly a testimony of what I believe the first fruits. I, I believe and I could be wrong here. Uh, this is me. But I, I think my wife and I, we, we've sat down for a couple of years now. We went through this situation where uh, many of you know the story. Our, our house was on sale on the market for 140 days, I think. And we couldn't sell it. No one was looking at our house. We were trying to sell it. We wanted some land. We wanted, we, you know, we had boys and, and Natalie. And we wanted to go out and just didn't have some property. We had all kinds of chickens and sheep and running around a subdivision. It was not cool. When I say some, they had 115 chickens, about 12 sheep in a subdivision. It was time to move. 
And, and we, we, we were praying. We couldn't sell the place. And the, and the Lord said to us, we went to a conference in Canada, my wife and I, and the Holy Spirit broke me. And we were saving. We were waiting on this farm that we wanted somewhere. We just needed some land. And, and I wept like a baby. My wife said, you never cry. You just, I wept and wept and wept. But here's why. Because God told me, when you go back, tell that person that you can't buy that farm. Give it up. The Lord said to me, give it up, didn't he? So we came home, had a meeting with the people that we was looking at their farm, and God says, I told them, we got to give it up. I'm sorry, we can't buy it. We gave it up. The Lord said to us, build my kingdom first. Put me first. And we took the money. Uh, this building came up. As many of you were around at that time, this building came up. And several, several people who, who are still here uh, put down a lot of money, personal money. We were one of them. A few, few people here. Several of you, some of you would be shocked at some of the people sitting here who, who gave thousands of dollars to be able to move into this place. We were one of them. We gave thousands of dollars. We gave, up the, we gave up the land. We gave up everything and said, his first. Our house, we were driving down. My parents will tell you, we were driving down. I was driving down to Evansville to sign the papers for this building to buy it. I'm driving down to Evansville, and my realtor texts me and says, I have no idea what is going on, but someone's putting an offer on your house. I'm like, whatever. We've heard that before. We signed the papers. Two hours later, the lady calls me and says, my real estate agent calls and says, I've never, she's the, the biggest one in, in southern Indiana, one of the biggest uh, realtors in this area. She says, I've never in my life seen anything like this. Someone from New York just bought your house and they haven't, they haven't even seen it. I said, scam, here we go. I mean, I'm getting us all good here. So we get scammed. It wasn't a scam. They bought it. It was. We became good friends with them people to this day. They bought the on the same hour that we bought this building and put him first, our house sold. After we gave up the money. Later on, if you fast forward, Dylan knows the story well. He was with us. Dylan's came to the Lord, I think, through some of this, this situation we went through. We had a house. To make a long story short, <laughs> God gave us the same, gave us the land. We were going to have maybe fifty, sixty thousand dollars in debt to buy this land. We were cool with that. A lot of equity. We fast forward. We had to wait eighteen months through all this stuff. And when all said and done, we got the property and a house with zero debt. First fruits. First fruits. I don't know what else to call it. It's not tithe. It was first. We gave up something we desired and wanted because we wanted a new land. We wanted something new, something fresh. Listen to me. I believe, and I'm not. I'm not going to jump out too far on here. But I believe there's some. There's a deep thing still to this day about putting God first in everything. I'm talking everything. I mean everything. Your spiritual life, your emotional life. Your physical life, your job, your vehicle, your children, you name it. Whatever part of your life you want, friend, your health, put him first. Well, what's that look like, Jason? I don't know. It's a free will offering. I don't know. I don't know what it, I don't know what it means for you. You're going to have to pray and let the Lord speak to you about it. I'm not talking about money even. It could be. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about putting him first in everything. There is some principles here that God does never change. God never changes. How many of you know you can't outgive him? You cannot outgive him. Lucas, I want you to come up and play something if you would. Or Lexi, would you come with him? James 1.18 says, Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first, first fruits of his cr creation. Who shall be? Turn to James. I want you to see that. James chapter 1. You've got to see this. Listen to me. Don't settle in. Listen to me. Do not settle in as thinking, well, Jesus was the first fruits. Now we can be saved. The old can be wiped away and the new can come. Yes, that's, that's it. True. But do you, you think Jesus is done with you? Do you think now that you're saved that it's over? I've got everything I need from him. How many of you want to see him do something still? I want more of God. I want, I want to see him move, continue in every aspect of my life today. I still want to see him. James 1.18, look at that. 
of his own will, he began us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation, of his creatures. Do you think God can still work with these free will offerings of a first fruit, giving him the first of everything? How many of you have a dream of something, maybe, maybe a, 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 a land, a house, a, a car, anything that... That, listen, it's not, it's not going against his word. It's not some crazy dream of, you know, it's gonna, I, want a, I want a $3.5 million house so I can win the rich people to Jesus. Friend, that ain't God. Okay, don't come out of that dream. But I'm talking about, you know, well, you, like my family, I just said, I want some land. I need some land. I want my kids to run around some land. I'm not tied to it. It's just, it's just stuff. It's all going to burn. My house is going to burn. All the barns are going to burn. This building is going to burn. I'm not attached to any of it. It's just a tool for now, right? But it is cool watching God do things. I love that. I'm going to tell you what's cool is when he gives you something, and later on you give it back to him and say, God, I love you. Thank you for it, but it's not mine. It's yours anyway. You can have it back. I'm already ready. Just, I'm ready to whatever. Whatever's next. I think, I think there's something with his first fruits that he still wants to teach us. And some of you say, well, you know, I, I need, we need a new vehicle, or we need, we need new this, or we need something. Friend, how about saying, Lord, since I need this new whatever, vehicle, used vehicle, whatever, I, I got $5,000, Lord, I, 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 whatever. I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to make, I'm gonna make a, a sacrifice. I'm going to give an offering for your kingdom first. I don't know. Offering, a free will offering. I love it, the fact that you can choose to do and give. This first fruit is everywhere in the Bible. And I want to get deeper into what, what Jesus is, him being the first fruits of all creation. Friend, he, died, he rose again on the first fruits. You know what he's going to make, make new for us? Everybody say all things. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I think it's, isn't it Psalms that says, his mercies are new every morning, new every morning, new every morning. Listen, with a relationship with Jesus, you should not have to wait till Sunday to begin to worship him and enjoy the fruits of your worship. Don't wait till Sunday to Sunday. But I'm going to tell you, there's something special about the first day of Sunday week, joining with all the people. There's something special about it, isn't there? It's different than Mondays and Thursdays. It is. But, friend, don't forget, every, every morning his mercies are new for you great is his faithfulness and so are Sundays and so are every year every year God wants to bring us into a deeper walk and a deeper relationship with him I want you to stand if you would with me I pray that you begin to see this because I believe God is going to reveal some things to us he wants to redeem the land he wants to redeem the land uh, I will say this I believe God I believe the Lord shows us and if you ever planted a garden if you're gardeners anybody here I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God is all over the garden. Unless the grain of seed falls into the ground and dies, it cannot do anything. You know, you can hold that corn or that bean seed in your refrigerator or on your, on your uh, countertop for about three years. It'll just sit there, won't it? You take that same thing and you bury it in the ground, die, it dies. And what happens? How many ever planted one piece of corn? How many of you ever planted a piece of corn? Raise your hand if you ever planted corn. When that corn came up, was there one corn on it? There's a whole ear full. Matter of fact, probably two. Listen, God can outgive you. When you give Him the first, He can outgive you. God is looking for first place. God is looking for first place in every one of us. He's after our hearts, folks. He's not after your wallet. He's not after anything. He's after your heart. And once he gets your heart, he knows he's got you, and he can give you and bless you many, many times beyond what you can give him. I want you to bow your heads with me, if you would, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, teach us your word. I pray that we begin to see this first fruits. Lord, it's a deeper deeper thing than what we could ever imagine. God, your desire is for us to put you first. It's about our hearts. It's about us laying down what we desire, laying down what maybe what we want or maybe what we even think we need. 
and saying and admitting to you, God, you are first. I'm laying this down for you. It's a sacrifice. It's going to cost me something. It's going to cost me something. But, Lord, as unto you, I lay it down in Jesus' name. Lord, we are a type of the first fruits of your creatures. Lord, this is a new season. It's, it's a springtime. It's a time for newness. And, Lord, you begin to speak to people. I believe even here this morning, you're speaking to people about a new place in their life. A new, a new business, a new job, a new this, a new that. Lord, and I pray you, I know that you're waiting on us to make a move. You're waiting on us to lay something down, God. And Lord, I don't maybe know what that is. Maybe none of us here know what it is. But we're going to begin to seek you and ask you, what do you, what do you want from us, God? You were, we got to come out of the old. We got to come out of the old so we can come to the new. New wine can only be put in new wine skins. Lord, redo us in Jesus' name. Father, re remake us, I pray. If there's anyone here, Lord, with sin in our life, if there's something here that's doomed us, if there's a net, an entanglement, God, of sin in our life that we've allowed to creep in through our eyes and through our ears, things that we've watched and things that we've listened to and perhaps things that we've spoken against others, God, I ask you to forgive us and we lay it down today. I ask you to wash us in Jesus' name. Friend, if that's you, if there's any entanglement in your life, you need to get that out today. Friend, come down here. Do not take it out with you today. Holy Spirit, we're here for you today. God, we are yours. And I ask you to reveal yourself to us today. Or reveal yourself, I pray. Reveal your word to each one of us today. Lord, if there's anything at all that's doomed us, Lord, anything at all that we're holding on to, God, I pray today that we can let go of it and walk in true holiness with you in Jesus' name.